It's the third Sunday of the season in Euro NASCAR Pro, the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series taking to the Autodromo di Vallelunga as part of the American Festival of Rome. The fans attending in their droves, plenty of classic Americana on hand and the odd guitar in hand as well as we prepare for race two of the weekend, round six of the season. Last time we saw a great drag race between Gianmarco Ercoli and Alan Day off the line as we went racing and it would be Ercoli in the lead. He'd have a nice little gap in the early stages, but it was to be short-lived. The safety car period after this collision between Thomas Crisonis and Alia Kolok, who we're riding on board with there. First safety car, there would be another one later on in the day as well. But it would once again be Ercoli off the line first and fastest as they went back to green flag conditions. And he would retain the lead, but not for that long because Alan Day had intentions of moving through the field and he acted on them. Really incredibly late breaking uh, coming around this long sweeping Right-hand bend, just about found room alongside Ercoli. Set himself up for the inside at the next left-hander. Masterful driving from our two-time champion. You see there Alexander Graf getting involved as well, looking to build upon his momentum from a victory last time out at Brands Hatch. Ercoli was following Alan Day. And unfortunately, he didn't spot the body parts on the circuit the debris on the circuit and that brought an end to his race that allowed Alan Day to take the victory but not in circumstances that the driver was particularly happy with he wanted to scrap with Ercoli for that win and unfortunately it couldn't happen Nicola Rocca still our points leader despite a relatively conservative race in race one here at Vallelunga, but continuing to score points is exactly why he is our championship leader. So we'll see if he can work his way up the order here in race two on the Sunday with an even bigger crowd in attendance for the second day of the American Festival of Rome. Two and a half miles, just over four kilometers of racing across 14 corners on a circuit layout that suits NASCAR very well indeed. 33 degrees sunshine. Not sure that suits the drivers in the cockpits quite as well as the fans. Our pole sitter, Alan Day. Just uh, surviving turn, turn one and uh, finished the race in points and I've been uh, collecting a good, uh, good, um, good amount of points. Tens of thousands of fans on deck for the rid walk here. Fans, as always, getting the opportunity to get up close and personal with the cars and drivers. Accessibility in this packet, pack, uh, paddock, second to none in the European region. Alan Day and Gianmarco Ercoli running side by side. We get ready to get started for 18 laps of racing. Alan Day will be looking to do exactly what Ercoli did yesterday, and that's lead through the second corner of the lap. They run side by side. Some dust kicked up further back, but Alan Day trying to stay around the inside line, but I'm not sure he's kept the lead there because Gianmarco Ercoli, yes, he was carrying more speed through turn two, and he is into the lead. It's side by side for third place between Maggi and Nicola Rocca. So Nicola Rocca, they're fighting for third place. He'd be happy to be on the podium here. Uh, in this event. He wants to try and score as many points as possible to retain his championship lead. You see there Dubek and Ionetta scrapping, among others, Frederick Gavion just behind them in the number three cup. They all shuffle through this opening sequence of corners. And look at this, Giorgio Maggi on the offensive here to the inside line. And almost almost made it stick but didn't quite get there managing to build a gap now over Maggi let's see if he can challenge Alan Day you see there the red banner above the windscreen of Rocker's car that denotes that he is our championship leader much like the red plate 
in off-road motorcycle racing, but a safety car will inevitably happen here. The 25 car in amongst a big, scr uh, big skirmish of machinery. Logan Bossi getting into the back of two other drivers by the looks of it. That took a while to clean up. Lap seven of the race and we're back underway. And this time it's the inside line once more for the 54 car Gianmarco Ercoli, position he's familiar with from yesterday. And Alan Day has been jumped once again because there goes Nicola Rocca in the 56. We've got cars off track further back. And it's Sebastian Blakemolen. The 47 car as well there. If this weekend is in the hands of Thomas Brando. Two cars off there, but everyone continues to roll, so I think we're safe from a safety car, at least for now. The top three breaking away already. Look at Martin Dubeck up into fourth place as well. Last year's Euro NASCAR 2 champion, also fighting to defend his Euro NASCAR 2 title, but running competitively and strongly uh, within the challenge class of the Euro NASCAR Pro Series. We've got cars off there. Frederick Gavion has been turned. I think Liam Hazemans as well facing the wrong way. Lots of damaged cars. Lots of cars getting involved. Oh, dear. This is going to be a messy one to try and recover without a safety car. We've also got the 88 of Massimilio Lanza in the wall. There's a lot going on all at once there. Several incidents to clear up, and inevitably the safety car is called upon once again. Single file start this time perhaps in an effort to quell any further incidents. That 12 of the race, one third of the race remaining. And Alan Day this time trying to profit off a start. He hasn't done so, so far in this race. You see there, some of the cars still going. Liam Hazemans was still in that pack despite being involved in that last accident. So some diligence out of car and driver. Alexander Graff there just behind Giorgio Maggi. He's going to worry about Roman Ionetta behind him as well. Here's Gianmarco Ercoli leading the way from Nicolo Rocca. It's a Cal Racing 1-2 at the moment. That would go down well with the Italian crowd for sure. Out of the final corner they go, kicking up the dust and the gravel. Battle for fifth, uh, sorry, for third place between Rocca and Day. Alan Day tries to set the car up for a nice run, but ah, really having to fight arms full of oversteer there, isn't he? It doesn't seem to have affected him too badly, though, and he feels he's got the confidence to move up the inside and just about sticking to the inside there of Roca. Two, top two of the championship coming into this weekend there, having a scrap, and it seems as though Nicolo Roca may have issues because not only has Alan Day successfully got past him, but now he's fallen further past. Uh, past has gone Dubek, past has gone Maggi, Alexander Graf also getting by. That card just not picking up out of corners. And that is not a good sign in the slightest. Evgen Sokolovsky there, now wearing yellow and blue in a nod to his home nation of Ukraine as opposed to the golf colours he's worn previously. He's trying to make his car wide, isn't he? He's under pressure from Fabrizio Armetta there, as well as the 23 car. That's driven by Henri Tuamala. Tuamala having to hold off some of his competition. You also see there Frederick Gabion trying to work his way back through the order after his issues. But Yevgen Sokolovsky, who of course also races a GT4 car, very busy driver, and a driver we always love to see in the paddock, but he's left the door open there. Tuamala through uh, up a position there then, despite Sokolovsky's best efforts. You see there all of these cars wearing war wounds of some description. It's been a physical race this here at Vallelunga, as it so often is, especially on the Sunday when we know we are pushing the cars back into the trucks at the end of the day. Here comes Maggi then. He's all over the back of Dubek in this battle for P4. Race art technology entered car and wow, what a lunge up the inside there. Some of these drivers seriously faithful. The abilities of their cars breaking. And there you see Maggi getting through. Good for his efforts in the overall championship. This is also running in the Junior Trophy. Maggi has been very impressive this year. Alan Day just hasn't quite been able to match Gianmarco Ercoli in this race. 
He was sad to see Ercole drop out in such fashion yesterday. And now Ercole is clear of the PK Car Sport driver. Rounding the final corner, the chequered flag awaits, and it is a victory for Gianmarco Ercole on his home turf ahead of Alan Day. Giorgio Maggi rounds out the overall podium, takes the junior classification as well. Dubek, the first of the Challenger Trophy cars home as well, and Graf rounds out the top five. Sokolovsky there. We'll also see the finish ahead of the drivers he was scrapping with. <laughs> Look at the state of some of these cars. Lots of walking wounded, but Ercole on top. I think the the most long race of the this season. So three safety car, uh, double uh, laps. No, it's difficult, but uh, I start very very fast in the first uh, starting procedure, and after I I management my my speed because today we are very very speed in the Euro NASCAR NN the Luli doing a very good race and I and I take the car for a winner this race and for me it's a pleasure with uh, my fans. Yeah. There you go, Alan Day then will walk out of this event as our championship leader. Five cars within 13 points at the top of the championship, the Junior Trophy Championship still firmly held at the moment by Giorgio Maggi. To Amala leading the Challenger Trophy Championship. A great result though for Ercole. He will come to Moss next time in September with momentum ever in his favour.